You catch your breath. Catch your breath. Do you just think we have to go to the top there? Yep. Yeah, I'm now at the part of the hike where I want to cry. We still have two to three hours more left. I'm exhausted. Welcome to the Cotopaxi province. I'm here in the western region to share with you a video of hiking the Kilatoa Volcano Crater. I have lived to share that story with you. And stick around to the end because I'm here in Puhili. I'm going to share with you two drinks I've never seen anywhere in Ecuador that are very traditional and one ornato you don't want to miss. All right, I apologize. We threw everything that we own basically all over the beds. But this is a family size room, so it would actually fit four, but because there's no one else here, they gave it to us unbelievably for $10 a night. Very important, there is a heater here. So it is a little bit chilly, but it's not too bad actually. And then you've got this gigantic bathroom. So accessible. And the room is on the main floor too, so very accessible for everyone. Good morning from Kilatoa. It is 6 a.m. and we are about to head out for what they say is a five hour hike. It's probably gonna be six for me. This is the longest hike I've ever done, but I'm really excited to do it because it's a hike around the crater. So I didn't wanna miss out on this. And actually, I'm properly dressed somewhat this time. I have hiking boots, I have zip off pants, I have really good socks and uh, so we're just layering up because it's zero degrees celsius right now good morning okay seeing this in the daylight that part right there looks a little bit scary <laughs> all right we're on our way so they gave us directions to go clockwise around. A lot of people do get lost because there are several trails. However, we downloaded maps.me, which works offline, and it's supposed to have the trail. So hopefully we don't get lost. Oh, this is the entire uh, this. track, the, the Kilotoa loop. Oh, if you want to do the whole thing, yeah. which is 40 kilometers? Yep. We are doing how many kilometers? 10 kilometers, it's gonna take us, they say five hours, but probably longer, because we're gonna stop a lot. We have lots of friends joining us today. I don't know if you can see, there's a little pig there, a little black pig. It is a gigantic pig, it's actually scary. I could probably bite my leg off. All right, second time trying to hike Kilotoa Crater. We came yesterday to Sigchos. Unfortunately, as we were driving up, we noticed a lot of landslides and the road was actually pretty bad. So it's a farming area. And instead of farming like the indigenous people where they built these terraces, they just clear cut the land and um, are farming on a slope. So all the water just comes down. And as we were driving by, you can see what that does long term because the land was just coming onto the road. Now to give some perspective, this is 4,000 meters and Quito is 2,800. Last night we actually saw someone just getting physically sick on the road. That is what altitude sickness will do to you. So if you want to do the Kilato loop, best thing is not to do it right away. Kilatoa is an extinct volcano. So it's a crater, the water is mostly from rain but it's inhospitable, so nothing lives in it. But all of the minerals from the volcano give it that beautiful green color. All right, 10 minutes in. So far, I would say an easy 
walk. Um, I would not want to do this in sneakers. I am glad that I have hiking shoes on because it is a bit wet. However, we're about to head up to a peak and that is going to be hard. Not just because it's hard to go uphill, but because of the altitude. So this tree, well, it's like a vine right here. That flower is poisonous. You can't touch it. <laughs> We're trying to get it for a shot. Anyway, you got to be careful. Don't touch the pretty flowers. They are poisonous. Yeah, you do need to be very careful where you walk. There's a trail. I mean, you're on your own here. There are no guarded rails, so if you're holding the camera like me, you have to stop to take some. In a span of 60 seconds, this hill that we're going up got really foggy. Oh, I do see a sign though. Siga el sendero. So I think it really should be translated as follow the trail. I'm gonna follow this guy. <laughs> it takes so long here, as you wanna take so many pictures. Super cloudy. We're going up by that hill. The problem with these stray dogs, um, they're not spayed and neutered here. And then some people from the city actually drop the dogs off, like up here, if they have unwanted dogs. And you think, oh, it's not a big deal, but it is a big deal because there is a bird that should be here, but it's like a terrestrial or land bird. We haven't seen any of them because the dogs are probably eating them. So not a good sign. Hikers who are here feed them, which is a problem. In fact, as soon as I opened up my backpack to change my battery lens, a dog was like up on me because he thought that there was an opportunity for food. It's sad. Somebody needs to definitely come in and look after these dogs and have like a spade and neutering program because there are so many of them. And they're nice and they're so skinny, but don't feed them. All right, be careful with the cliff. Follow the trail. This one's called. It looks like horns, right? Yeah. So it's like a little deer's head. So oh, it is like a little deer's head. Yeah, deer's horns. Deer's horns. Indian paintbrush. This trail is a lot easier than going up over that. That would have been harder. Right here is very slippery. If I were here in sneakers, I would fall. So this is typical weather for this time of year. So you gotta get up very early. If you want the clearest weather, that's July, August, that's the best time to camp. You won't have these clouds. However, it's also the coldest time in Ecuador, is July, August. So we have nice weather, but we don't have visibility. So if you wanna plan around it, Ecuador is cold but clear in July. This dog issue is so complicated because you see these dogs and your heart breaks. This is actually, you can tell it's a female and it's had pups, but it, it is a problem here. And so you don't want to continue the behavior of them begging for food from backpackers or hikers, but also they really do need to do something here because it will change the ecosystem.
are llama, or known here as llama tracks. Oh, you can see them? Oh my god, we can see them. So we are halfway, I think, because that was right below us. So I know for a lot of people, you see all of these pictures of people in like Machu Picchu and even here taking pictures with llamas, but they are wild animals. And so gotta be careful. you gotta be careful. And they were very interested in the dog. So <laughs> the dog was staying close to us. And like, ah, because I don't know, they're like the size of a horse. So if they came running at you, yeah, that's scary. I'm also a fraidy cat, but Andreas just kept saying, don't look at them and keep going. Oh, this is, oh my God, we saw the dog go up this side. It is steep. I'm gonna have to put my camera down. <laughs> it's steep and narrow. At the top of another hill, hill number two, just took my time. I think, Part of the reason I didn't like hiking before is you always feel like you're letting other people down. You're like the last one. So to have someone who likes to stop and look at the birds is great because I know that he'll walk ahead and he'll stop and look for some things. Because I'm really enjoying this day, but just a, you push yourself a little bit. I can push myself a little bit. All right, so gourmet part of this hike is we bought white bread, cheese, deli ham. So we made sandwiches this morning. No mayo or anything else, we're roughing it. <laughs> if we had more time. Yeah, you can do it. Oh, actually, it's not so bad. Yeah, you can do it. I, uh, yeah. I Why are you like super it. scared? Like, oh, I'm going to die. Yeah, one step at a time. That's it. challenging not too challenging out of breath but still doable and as we climb the last little bit of this oh we could smell something burning and then we saw the straw hut and then we saw this welcome coffee tea also coca-cola and shopping so i was looking for this because i i knew that i I, that I felt the... You the, smelled it? The fragrance, yeah. What it's is like it? It's like peppermint. Oh, so she's making fresh peppermint tea. Yeah, well, it's not peppermint. It smells like... I don't know. Yeah. It's really... um. I don't know what it is. Oh, I thought the footage was foggy, but it's literally fog. Just, no, 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 you're going up there. Yeah, exactly. You okay? Yeah, I'm good.
How are you feeling? I'm not feeling great. I'm tired. But look at this view. Come on. I know the view's worth it. I'm gonna do it. Catch your breath. Catch your breath. Do you just think we have to go to the top there? Yep. I just feel like mentally. Yeah, don't like get rid of that. This is the last big hike. Nope. You see how you like picture yourself? You put in that situation, I'm not hiking anymore. It's no, rewarding. I meant this is the last big part. The last. Yeah. And trust me, it, it is not that hard. Maybe okay. looking all the way up, you, th you thought, oh, that yeah. mother is like scary. But you know, yeah. we're making it, we're doing it. Yeah, we're doing it. I don't Yeah, I'm now at the part of the hike where I want to cry. We still have two to three hours more left. I'm exhausted. And I tried to cry twice, but Andreas wouldn't let me. made it to the top. View's not worth it. But I am proud of myself. But I'm so what tired. What the view? There's no view. Oh, okay. The view is just cloud. But I am proud of myself for making it here. Okay, so not feeling as <laughs> mental breakdown-y as I did back there. I think I just kind of hit a point where I mentally didn't think I could do it, even though Andreas was telling me it was the same height as Cajas, 4,000 meters. But now I'm feeling good. We still have some tall mountains to go, but I think we can do it. I'm feeling good. Did it once, it can't be worse. Okay, second shelter. Rain is a little bit better. I actually feel fantastic. I'm over the hump of wanting to cry. Thank you, Andreas, for <laughs> at one point he actually pushed me up the hill because I didn't think I could do it, but now I'm feeling a lot better. And we talked about how some people climb Everest and those people cry. I know this is nowhere close to that, but I felt that emotional, like, mind <laughs> that, that happens, but we can do it. I can do it all the time. You can do it all the time. Yep. He kept reminding me that Cajas is the same altitude. So it wasn't altitude that was bothering me and my legs could take me. I just had to have the mind to do it, so. Good. We're almost there. We're almost. Okay. <laughs> Looking at that, that seems so crazy. That's a mountain that we just climbed. It was challenging. I can't believe we did it. Looking back, it looks really steep. And I'd love to say that it didn't feel steep. It felt steep. I'm gonna be honest, it felt steep. But I'm very proud of myself. Thank you. Oh, this area looks much more manageable. I'm hoping that that was the, the hardest part. And it's not an emotional roller coaster. <sighs> Yeah, we're both, you know, stretching our limits. Yeah. Because actually, like, my average of walking is like six kilometers. We're doing 10. Yeah, it feels like 10. No, we're doing 10. I know. Actually, 11. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. Uh, up there. Up there, up there. Up there. 
You can. We're almost done. So kind of went through a mini mental breakdown at the end because we've been hiking for eight hours. This is 10 kilometers and like my legs are sore. His hamstrings are sore. Um, he hikes more than me, but usually only five to six hours and we're at hour eight. They say it takes five hours, but we did stop quite a bit. And then also I really had a hard time in the middle of it, but glad we did it. The sun is out. The view is so beautiful and it looks like it's not going to be that hard. If you look down here, it actually looks, this is doable, very doable. And then we're just going to crash. Okay, so things I didn't show you when it was raining was that there are a bunch of look-off spots, really cute spots to take photos, video, but because it was raining, we didn't have great visibility. And so I kept my camera in our dry bag. I think overall, if you're a good hiker, you could do this in five hours. We stopped to try to fly the drone twice and then just took a lot of breaks. And so it has taken us so far seven and a half, but worth it. I don't know if this cow is friendly or not friendly. Oh, mother-in-law tongue. I've seen that as a regular one, but not a white one. Whew. I know, even though we had maps me, these two signs were marked all around just to let you know you're going the right way. Almost there. Oh, are those, is that where we entered? <laughs> I'm so tired. Uh, on a scale of one to 10, how hard was this? Eight. Right. What well, we it? I, I did it. Like Everybody can do it. So I think some keys to being able to do this was we took our time, we took breaks. And if there were people behind us, we just let them go by. So we didn't let them push us faster. Second, you gotta go with someone good. Andreas saved me many times, pushed me up a hill. He was my cheerleader, my therapist. Uh, but what I really loved about this was it's not like when you go to the top of a volcano and you get to the top for the view. The view was there the whole way around, so that was inspiring. This is the gatekeeper. Oh. He will decide. Oh, hi, Yama. He's like the gatekeeper. You have to answer a riddle. Oh, yeah. Look, he's giving you a riddle and you have to answer it. Yeah, what's the answer? He's letting us go. That means we got it right. If you don't want to hike the crater, there is actually a look off right across the street from our hotel. So when we got here last night, we saw a bus had just dropped people off so they could come and take a photo. And so you can come and see the lake. Well, right now you can't see much of anything. But last night and this morning you could. So you don't actually have to hike at all. But I think the hike was nice. It's so nice to have something warm. So this is grilled plantain with cheese for a dollar. Mm. Mm. Last thing I ate was Oreos. Having something cooked is nice. Plantain is like a banana, but it's actually more starchy. And this is a little bit sweet when grilled, and then the cheese gives it a little bit of saltiness. It's really good. Perfect for the end of the trip. So we're here in Puhili, 
which is a small town in the Cotopaxi province. And we came to the market known as El Barco for some food, but we found Ida who is serving some very special drinks, but only on Sunday. We're about to have leche calostra, which in English is uh, calostrum, but I hadn't heard of it. It is actually the milk after uh, a cow has first had a baby. So the first milk after a birth. And what they do is it's a warm drink and they make it with lots of spices. So you might have canela, cinnamon, clove. Everyone has their own recipe. Now, back in the day, this was a very important drink because it has so many bioactive nutrients. It's considered to be very healthy. And today, uh, if you're a weightlifter or someone who wants to save money on buying those big jugs of whey protein powder, this actually has much more. And she's serving it here at the market for only a dollar. What does it taste like? We're gonna find out. Mmm, it's actually really good. It's kind of like a, well I just bit into I think what is a clove. It's kind of just like a warm porridgey drink. You have that thickness. There are some chunks in it, but it's quite good. It's just like warm, like a nice warm porridgey drink with spices. It's pretty good. All right, so the second drink that she has is chawar mishke. And so chawar mishke is simply the juice of the agave plant. So if you look at sugarcane, you can get sugarcane juice, which is called guarapo. This is chawar mishke, which is just juice straight up from the agave plant. Now to make it a little bit more filling, substantive, they also have put some pearl barley in this. So this actually could be a whole meal. And this was a dollar as well, right? This was a dollar. So this is a great snack. Now to try it. Mm, okay, this is interesting. It does definitely has some of that kind of barley flavor from the pearl barley but it's also a little bit sweet. And then also, it definitely is a little bit unctuous, like it has some weight to it. It's not just a straight up juice, it's actually quite filling. Oh, these yucca and gachas are good. How are you? From Now it's 1.30 on a Sunday, and some of the stalls are winding down, but there's one stall that is just ramping up. Lots of people are sitting around us, and that's because they are next to Aida, and they're known as the best ornado in the market. And when I looked at the yapping gachos with that crust on that potato, I knew this was going to be a great place, because even if the pork wasn't going to be good, the yapping gachos were going to be great. So I think the success the meter of a great cook, the best ornado is to have also an amazing yapping gacho. It needs to be crusty on the outside, crispy and then creamy on the inside. That's what this looks like. And then when I look at this pork skin, you can see, oh, that is also fantastic too. But now let's just get to the pork. That's what the ornado is all about. They serve it with some incurtido. Looks so good. And then, This is good. I've been trying Ornato all around the country and I'm so excited to try it here because it is good. Mm. Definitely unexpected. We were not planning to get Ornato. Now they also served us a he, a little bit of that on top. I'm breaking my own rule of not trying the ahi first because it could be too spicy. Actually not spicy at all. Mm -mm -mm. Crunchy skin. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's definitely crackling. And these yapping gachas. Look, seriously, look at that crust. Mmm. Mmm. It actually crunches in my mouth. This is fantastic ornato. I definitely recommend trying it. If you come on a Sunday, 
you also have to go to Ida because those drinks are also very interesting. I've never seen them anywhere in Ecuador.